I remember during the health care debate, all I heard when I came back to the district was about death panels. Death panels? Absolutely. Let me just tell you. What's the protocol and efficacy? My mother is in a nursing home. She was on hospice for a while, but she became too well to be on hospice, too sick to be at home. 30 plus years of multiple cirrhosis, three congestive heart failures, onset of dementia. But she wanted to make sure that she sat down with her doctors, with her children, to make sure that her end of life was on her terms and how she wanted to see that. Now, all Americans ought to be able to do that. And that is where one of the greatest costs of our system comes in. And so we can't demagogue these issues. We've got to face them head on. Uh, I, I wish my mother would live forever. But we all know that none of us do. But we ought to be able to live on our final days on our own terms. And we ought to be able to do that knowing that there's not going to be a disruption or a change in a system that takes away that dignity or that opportunity. That is simply part of the social compact and the government. Is it so hard to take away the subsidies from the oil companies? Is it so hard to take away the subsidies of people that get, we subsidize them to move business offshore? And can we, as Kevin Lynch said, say, look, we're going to roll back the taxes to where it was during the Bill Clinton administration? Was that really that bad? And in the process, we're able to salvage our Medicare and Social Security plans and allow uh, people to be able to purchase health insurance? I think so. And uh, that's what I'm going to continue to work on. Uh, but I'm here to uh, take your uh, questions. I apologize. My voice is a little hoarse. I should point out that with us and standing up here, where is she? Oh, Lisa, stand up here. Lisa Perrone in our office is here. She does just a magnificent job. She is our point person on all Medicare and Social Security issues. Judith Stein, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Medicare advocate for the country, was going to be here as well, but had family obligations over this uh, Memorial Day weekend and couldn't make it, but we oftentimes refer people to her office. It's a great asset for Connecticut to have the Center for Medicare Advocacy right here in our own state. And they offer free uh, advice. Uh, they have uh, uh, attorneys. They have people that understand uh, the law. And we constantly refer them uh, to her. And uh, we're pleased uh, uh, to work with them on a regular basis. So let me throw it open to your questions. I saw the lady with her hand up back there. Go ahead.
I didn't read the article in the New York Times. I have a great deal of respect for David Brooks, and I think there's a number, I have a great deal of respect for a number of Republicans. I think what's happened is that their party has been taken to the far right. You know? And when it does, there's usually a counterbalancing uh, measure on the part of the general public, just like when the Democrats go too far left. Uh, but in this instance, yeah, there's a group of people, a strong group, including Grover Norquist, including Newt Gingrich, who said Medicare, they ought to let it die on the vine. There's a mindset. Now listen, I, you know, here's the thing. I can understand where they come from intellectually or ideologically that I look out across America, I'm proud to be an American. Everybody ought to be able to pull themselves up on their own bootstraps. You ought to be able to stand up for yourself and make ends meet. Now, I don't ask anybody for anything. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and that's not, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that attitude, except that's not how it works in reality. And so in reality, what do the people do? They enter into a compact with their company. That's what Social Security and Medicare is. It's the trust between the government and its people. Now, adjustments may have to be made, but adjustments can be made, you know, without ending a program as we know it, vouchering it. The bill that didn't pass that the Republicans put up primarily by the Tea Party would have ended Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. As it is, there's a $700 billion cut to Medicaid. And who does that hurt? Who does that go after? Nursing homes. How many of you know people in a nursing home? Oh, yeah. You know, so, now, meanwhile, the nation's wealthiest 1% in the same budget, they got additional breaks? Additional tax cuts? That is obscene. Thank you.